hello. Welcome back to Monster Train. You know what this intro is about? I already got it lined up. I've been scrolling. I ended the stream a little while ago. God, I ended the stream like 45 minutes ago. I have been sitting here doing nothing for way too long. Well, we're not going to think about that. I'm just, you know, momentary contemplation. It's 45 minutes of my life that I just spent scrolling through Twitter. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, this intro is about uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and not my inability to tear myself away from starting the doom scroll through Twitter that eats up a large portion of my day. Although at this point it kind of is about that, but Sonic the Hedgehog is also here. It's uh, We'll just talk about him uh, fast, if you will. I was going to say quickly because quickly sounds better there, but fast is his word. I, I don't really have a whole lot to tell you about Sonic. Big fan of Sonic 06. Uh, I feel like that game has lost some of its infamy in recent years. There's definitely a period of time where if you ask me what is the worst game of all time, snap answer, no question, Sonic 06. But that isn't the case anymore. It's kind of like, uh, well, I don't know. I'd have to think about it a little bit. Maybe Sonic 06, but there's probably something worse by now. Like Cyberpunk in terms of disappointment is pretty bad, although it's not just like a buggy mess. And with the rise of indie games, there is a lot of uh bad stuff out there now that people solo develop definitely not as dominant but sonic 06 and sonic boom are very bad i don't understand why the people behind sonic keep trying to go 3d i'm not even a big sonic fan but it just blows my mind you know why are you trying to play a serious sonic game with 3d graphics what are you thinking like what on earth are you thinking who is behind this decision? Is it me? Because I don't know. Probably not. I'm probably not the one behind Sonic. However. <laughs> Unless. Well, anyway. Uh, I hope that you're doing well today. I hope you're having a nice one. It is Tuesday. It's Monday for me. 3.15 a.m. Not super late. Uh, if I'm lucky, I might be in bed by 4. Wow. It's weird because I go to like I go to bed early sometimes. I'll record the episode ahead of time and I'll go to bed right after the stream and I wake up at the same time anyway. So I never really sweat the time that I go to bed. I wake up about, uh, you know, I wake I woke up today at 12.45 and I was like, huh, I could just get up and add 45 minutes to my day. I did. Surprise. And then could also have not scrolled through Twitter for 45 minutes. I could have had an extra hour and a half to do... Uh, I don't know what, but I could have, could have had all that time. Watch it go right out the window, as Linkin Park once said. Uh, anyway, don't forget to uh, in in this episode, I'm gonna do a, I'm doing I'm doing a counterculture thing. So make sure that you do not like this video. Uh, whatever you unsubscribe from the channel and uh, the other thing you do, you comment. Yeah, comment. Or don't comment. You know, that one's kind of like, there's no, there's no like on, so, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's get to it. We have Sap Talos. I don't know what to call this one. I just call her Soul Sucker because like the sap isn't the important part, but neither is the dazed. Double Barrel Talos because she has the haste pattern. Curse Fell, Patient Seraph, Offering Token, Vent, Frenzied Swarm. We're Stygian and Exile Hellhorn. I saw the circle artifact and I went, no way. They wouldn't do it for a third time, would they? Nah. Forever Flame is pretty strong with Queen Zimpling, but... Wing Steel is better. I've been converted. I'm a, I'm a believer in Conduit Tethys now. We just have to go to the Stygian banners. I think that spell weakness is not great, and Conduit Tethys is weak in this combat, but as long as we see anything that incants, Conduit Tethys can become pretty strong, is my thinking here. I will vent this, why not? Because we just, we load up on draw with Conduit Tethys, and whatever uh, damage spells we get, too bad it doesn't play the vent at X plus one. The Frenzy Swarm is pretty sweet as well. Here. Plan around not dying up here. But yeah, we just load up on damage spells and uh, two strong incant units. You know, Siren, ideally. Pick a Siren, any Siren. Uh, yeah, really, it doesn't matter. Either Siren here. But Armor Shark, 
basically it. Siren Armor Shark. Maybe there's another one. I mean, there definitely is another one. It's, uh, I should have put Train Steward down here, by the way. I think it's five damage in, I guess, but still. The other one are the totems that go with incants, but, you know. Good example of why I was always very anti uh, this build path. Obviously, it's not so bad. We just vent and are fine. We're going to take some damage, though. There's not much you can do about it. I could have, I guess, planned to draw a vent sooner, but nah. You just you, With Conduit Tactics, you take damage on this first combat. Something that, when I was initially building my understanding of this game, I thought was the end of the world, and now I recognize it is fine. Now, if this banner is bad, we will probably lose. And that would be unfortunate. However, it's really good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really good. I think I have to take Siren of the Sea here. Taking the Nameless Siren is a little disrespectful. I want both of these eventually. Huh. I'll take the safer pick of Siren of the Sea. We're gonna minus one onto the only card that doesn't get cost reduced by Tethys. Throwing Consume at this is decent. Not that good though. I think it's okay to pass it and just take a Train Steward removal instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ideally, I get the Collector here. I shouldn't have taken that removal, if I'm being honest with myself. I should not have done it. Mm, I'm okay with this. I think we should be fine. We have so much card draw. I think it should be okay. Throw Queens and Flings down. I guess I should have looked at playing Crystallis a bit better. I just, the idea is that I'm going to hit Vent with one of these enemies. Hmm, too bad it's not this time. Oh wait, do I get the... No, I don't quite get the Collector. A shame. Because now I'm not going to be able to afford this multi-strike. So buying that removal is going to end up biting me pretty much here. But... We'll see. I mean, if, if there's just a bad upgrade in the shop, it's not a big deal, right? It doesn't matter if the upgrade is bad. It's only if the upgrade is good that we care. I mean, I may as well play these. Maybe I'm not okay here, though. I need to draw... I need to just make sure I play Vent on this floor as well. And chain my incants together. Yeah, okay, we're fine. We're fine. Oh, we're not fine. Now we're fine. There you go. No worries. Trial was fine, and now we have an extra unit draft to find something really good here. There's a lot of good things to find. Uh, Flash Freeze is okay. I like. I kind of like taking Energy Siphon here. Mm. Kind of awkward. Ice Tornado is mediocre at best. We'll give it a try. Rage Serum is a free incant, but everything in this run is a free incant. Is three Rage worth incanting for? I guess it's fine. I'd rather just duplicate the siren that I have than take a new one. At least this way I can pretend I get the ten gold, which maybe means we get something cool here. Multi strike one, yep. Now I want this. I want to check the Concealed Caverns first, just in case there's 10 gold in here. Oh. <laughs> no, that would be silly. Right? I'm pretty, I think I just times 5 offering token here. That seems fine to me. I mean, does it, does it really matter? Not particularly. Am I muted, by the way? No, okay. So I think I want to... Oh, I would love to take both of these. If I skip this, though, I can get the armor too, and then I can duplicate that multi-strike siren, and we are just winning 100%. Titan's entry is nice, but like... Oh, but this unit is so good for us. I skip it, and I'm sad, because I would love to take shark here, but this is too good to pass up on. This is so, so good here. 
And now it is it is a little weaker in the Talos. I don't think we're at risk of dying to Talos here, but we are a little weaker in the Talos with this line. If this was a space loss top four situation, we might be in a dire strait perhaps. As it sits, I'm feeling pretty good. No vent floors. We're gonna win this run by just uh, what do I what do I say? I'm like powering removals here is what I would like to call it. We're gonna power out removals and try to win through that. Take draw here because we have no need for energy. Remove train stewards. Yeah, this is okay. If I I wanna play vent up here for sure. Yeah, I remove train stewards, I remove queens and flings, and I I just kinda forge the run through that. It's a little awkward if I don't hit vent on this turn, but I should, or not on this turn, but on the next one of the next two turns, I should say. But I should get there. Throwing a queen zipling down is good, also. Uh, this is an incant. I didn't lose a card that mattered, but sometimes I lose a card that matters. Then it's awkward. Mainly then, if I miss vent there, it's really bad. Oh. Cycle on through. I just, I would really like to not take this damage. That's all. Keep cycling. Mm. Oh, sir. I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, I just play the spells then. And we end up taking zero. Very nice. Okay, so we'll take nothing for the combat. Skipping and playing it like I did ended up being fine. A little scary, but fine. Yeah, we take draw for sure because we have Conduit Tethys. She answers our, uh, our concern of energy. Duplicate this siren, and we are looking pretty good here. I'm gonna probably play Super Ultra on this run from moving forward because I think it lowers the time to draw. No, it doesn't. Okay. It does not lower the draw time. Not at all. We duplicate this, and that's heavy. We have vent for backline. Hopefully, pick up something for Seraph, but probably not. Reinforce is winning. One Horns is awful. And how's Dark Deal? Dark Deal's okay. It's like... It's minus three health because of the... No, it's actually... It's only minus one, I guess. It's only minus one. But Reinforce is pretty good here, I think. Do I need it, though? Mm, I might need it for Seraph the Patient, honestly. Hmm. I wonder if I need it for Seraph the Patient. Do I respect Seraph the Patient so much so that I would take... Reinforce so that I can duplicate. Now, by the time we get to Seraph the Patient, we should be crazy on Incants, but that's also a problem. Mm, it's probably not a problem against Seraph the Patient on this run, though. Because we're scaling 4 health per turn, he's only going to be gaining 1 per Incant. Yeah. So, I'm going to take Dark Deal then. I think it's fine. It's a free card for Wing Steel. Can act as a ping if I need it to. Only minus 1 health. Or plus 14. It's like, it's fine. It's not great, because it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Lodestone Totem is, uh... That's something. So I would be pivoting into Lodestone Totem at this point. Do I feel good about that? I mean... It's like... I, I'm going to tell you, honestly, I don't think it matters. If I pay, pick and duplicate Lodestone Totem or duplicate Siren, I don't think it matters. I think that Lodestone Totem is slightly worse because there are draws that'll kill, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and remove some more train stewards. Implings go after train stewards. We just duplicate this lady and she is the whole run. Strange Brute. Could have had Siren of the Sea with the range Brute, which could have been cool as well. Lots of ways that this run gets out of control, I imagine. I'm going with the simplest one, because you can't really rely on seeing things like that. Uh, I'll respect this combat. If I'm just slightly off with my scaling, we can take a lot here, so it's fine to take it easy, I think. From this point onward, the run is pretty... Uh... What do I want to say here? Pretty... Brain? Not brainless, but it is kind of brainless, honestly. Siren of the Sea is very strong. 
shall we say. It's, it's a lot of uh, just kind of slinging cards at the screen, I guess. So, you know. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm like, I wanted to get the collector, but nah, whatever. There's not a whole lot more to talk about, though, for this run in terms of, like, planning. And it's not a lot to plan from here, so, you know. I'll be doing well today. I don't have a whole lot on the on the brain in terms of what I would talk about in this downtime. It's interesting. I used to be pretty good about filling downtime, but I've gotten a lot worse because of Monster Train it being the main game that I play. During Metropolis, there's a lot of downtime, and Metropolis is what I started doing YouTube on. Coming up on a year on YouTube, by the way. I, am I going to do something special? Probably not. I'll be honest. I haven't done anything special ever, because, yeah, we're going, this is a super ultra run. I haven't done, a, like, basically anything special for YouTube milestones. I really should. It's, like, good too, and it's fun as well. It's fun for you guys, it's fun for me if I have a good one. But I'm very, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty low effort when it comes to this stuff. I'm very, uh, that's a hand of five offering tokens. Very much, I just kind of... I don't know, I, I live my content creation life with the mindset of I just kind of want to turn on the stream or turn on the camera, play the game, upload it, be done with it, you know? I never really want to do anything else like uh, motivating myself to do rewards. I don't even want to call it motivating, right, because it makes it seem like it's a chore. I do enjoy it. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but at the same time, I'm just lazy. I shouldn't be, though. I really shouldn't be. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Anyway. Let's see what they show us here. We're looking to I'll click on any damage cards they show me. Unnamed Tome. Cyrus the Patient. What more can I say? And three imp cards. No imps. Stygian really is the most powerful clan by a lot. I used to say, like, wow, Stygian's really strong, isn't it? But I did not realize the depths of how absurd... I mean, the Stygian... Uh, some, of the, some of the opinions that I have were formulated in the very early days of this game, and things have changed since then. Namely, uh, both Sirens got buffed a lot. And so I don't feel so bad about being... They, they were pretty bad before. I'll say that. I think that the sirens were very bad. I'm okay with taking the minus one ice tornado just in case I see Frostbite and decide to pivot and do it. I probably won't and I'll probably mindlessly click on conduit, but eh, it doesn't matter. But yeah, uh, maybe I will do something for a year. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's gonna just kind of like come and go and I'm going to forget to do something is what I expect to have happen. But, if I remember, we'll do something fun. I'm gonna feed this guy, but I don't care. He's gonna die anyway. Well, he should die anyway. Something absurd would have to happen for this man to not be dead here. Yeah. Everything in this deck is free at this point, which is interesting as well. I will probably silence the bottom floor when it comes up here. It's not a- this- this combat doesn't have a boss that can be silenced. Like, on this floor, you can never face a boss that is silenceable. They're all- there's two bosses that have buffs, and that's it. The other one is Self-Made Harpy. Imagine if you could silence away Self-Made Harpy's multi-strike. That would be interesting. It, it would just be busted, right? It would be absurd. Not really interesting, it would just be crazy. You'd pick on Name Tome even more, and I already thought that on Name Tome was basically an auto add before Seraph the Patient even. I thought that it was a uh, just take this because it's good sort of card. Because it hard counters a lot of bosses, and by a lot I mean there's one specific boss that hard counters uh, the 4 7 Living Armor boss, the man who gains armor based on. or rather gains attack on revenge, that guy. It is hard to just sling cards like this. The duplicate times five on offering token was good. Like, I think it is a net positive for our number of incans played, but for my brain, is it good? I'm not sure. 
uncertain. Titan's Tooth will be free. I'll click it. Also, you know, it is free because we have five offering tokens. And Flame will not be free. Uh, Duplicate's okay. I'll go for the removals, though. Maybe we can also look at artifacts. Sometimes we see double encant, and, uh... Yeah, this run is even more absurd than it already is. Firebox is fine. Multi strike. I mean, I just can't take any of these. Well, so, move another imp. The impling removals don't seem like much, and they really aren't that much, but they're good because they set us up. Our setup time is now basically zero. We're doing the absurd degenerate shit right away now, more or less, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna play bottom four to combat this. I don't want to take curses. And I don't think it matters. Oh, hey. The other siren. Maybe it matters, and maybe I'm going to be punished for this, but I think that because of the two free turns we get against uh, this, this spell, we should be able to just do our setup and suck the snowball. The real question here is, do I take another draw? I mean, this run is really only limited by its ability to draw cards, I feel like. Everything in this deck is free. Oh, so, what do I care? Yeah, I think I just take double draw. Conduit Tethys is our energy relic, and... When, when all that your deck cares about is encanting as much as possible, it turns out that having all of your spells cost zero means you can just take a bunch of draw for free. How about it? I could take space as well. It's fine to take space, maybe. It's just like we always set up top four with space, which I don't think matters. I'm gonna have a turn where I draw a bunch of those and take damage that I shouldn't take for being lazy, but... It's also not necessarily laziness, but uh, it is just good to be encanting more, so filtering these out. On this turn, I should get rid of it, though, for sure, because it doesn't hurt our encant numbers. And yeah, but we took our initial 15. Definitely, I've come a long way in terms of how I feel about Monster Train as a whole, in terms of, uh, like, just, uh, it's not exactly the correct parsing of that sentence. I've come a long way in terms of power level assessment, I think. It, uh, taking early game damage isn't as bad as I initially thought it was. It is, uh... It is not that bad. Because early game damage, as long as you don't die, you typically don't take a bunch of damage from chip damage, so you can lose 15 or 20 health and still come out on top. I'm finding anyway. I mean, we did have that run recently where I went to like 2 HP and then recovered the run anyway. I don't remember which one it was, but that was a good one. Just looking. Blood Angel is worthless. Uh, wing Clippings is pretty bad though, so I guess I could take the money. It's a little better. Again, Steel Shop is worthless, and I'm just gonna take Conduit 3. Even though I have no spells that it matters for, it eh, tanks Tooth, I guess. I'm not gonna grab Frostbite. It doesn't really matter. This run is pretty over regardless. Spikes 5, I might uh, I might take some unnecessary damage too, so I'm not gonna bother. It's not worth it, is my feeling. I don't need the money. This run is one, for sure. This is probably Trample Boss, but I'm not confident of that. However, I'm not afraid either. I could have silenced this guy that's coming up, I guess, to avoid the... Sweep Ember Drain. I'm gonna lose my Tethys, which is sometimes an issue, perhaps. Is it an issue? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I'm not sure. Oh, I have Frenzied Swarm, I guess, so we can keep her standing, perhaps. Holding Vent and using it on the floor below seems fine. Discarding Offering Token a little more often feels like it might be right. 16 and 50 is 66. And I just toss this. I'll back this floor, sure. I can basically draw the whole deck every turn, which is good. With these offering tokens, I really do just cycle it all super quickly, though. Like, really, really quickly. Imagine if we had the uh, offering monument in this round, though. Wouldn't that be something? Can I get my... It's possible that I get it again. 
the... I mean, I should draw Frenzy Swarm for this turn or the turn after. Although the turn after is this uh, triple triple wave and not the Amber Drain wave. I am a little worried about Tethys dying, although at this point we're not ever taking damage on this combat, so there's nothing to be afraid of. I do miss this turn, but that's right, my whole deck is free. I'm really worried I can just not play cards on this turn. I mean, I guess I may as well. It's fine. It seems okay anyway. Oh, whoops. That's a misclick, and I end up taking some damage for it eventually. I don't think I was ever killing that guy, though. Maybe with a card draw or two I could have got him. No, with the incants I would have had him, actually. So yeah. Definite misplay. It took a little damage. I am not sweating it too much, but... Might end up being a problem. We've been having some really, really strong runs lately. Although some of them have been unconventional. Take a second, Silence Tone, because the faster we silence the Seraph, the better off we are. Oh, Battering Ram would have been good there, huh? I could have taken Battering Ram and been stronger. Interesting. Last Queen's Implane goes. I'm gonna remove Offering Token here. Times 5 was a little much. It's good, don't get me wrong, it's just a little much. Totem Fragments, whatever. Light's Gift is pretty good. Yeah, Light's Gift is good. Or some, in one in three cases it is just worthless, but yeah. Move two Offering Tokens. It doesn't matter a whole lot. I think that the only way we lose this is if we... We have to have just an unbelievable turn of events here. Seraph has to be in a pretty rough spot. If we get to play top four... Yeah. It's okay to rally here, I think. I'll actually, I'll miss a few incants to look. I heard the frostbite sound effect, I got excited. Oh, I will miss a few incants to look here. I'm gonna play it down here. Okay. He's gonna get a little stronger. It shouldn't matter. He's gonna get quite a bit stronger here. It shouldn't matter. 32, I don't think it matters, but maybe this is going to cause an issue. It is possible that this will be a problem, but I think with the Light's Gift it's fine. I just have to make sure that I'm super scaling as fast as I can because the only enemy that hits us ever is Seraph, and he's gonna be hitting for 62, 64, I guess. As long as we're above 64, Although it is uh, getting worse and worse by the second because of the melee weakness stacking. So maybe I just have to draw Frenzy Swarm to keep her alive. Huh. Interesting. It's definitely a problem. I just don't know. I mean, we're, we're outscaling, I guess, so it's fine. Very awkward turn one. Might have been better just to play my two units and sit, but... Alas, I did not. Well, I'm gonna keep drawing Frenzy Swarm and keep pushing this problem down the road. We are at five melee weakness on my Siren. If you're if you're keeping track, that is five melee weakness on the Siren of the Sea here. So, yeah, you could say things are looking a little bit grim because it's about to go to six, which is just what. How much damage is she taking right now? It's 7 times 32, so she's taking, uh... She's taking 210. She's actually pretty close to surviving it, though. Like, I'm keep- I'm keeping her on life support, just barely. Sometimes I hit it. Yeah. Because if I can- I, I make it to the Relentless, and now she should live through the first hit, because I get to just play- I get to have three turns where she's not having her damage taken scale up, and she was really close to staying on par. Also, the Siren in the middle soul is this fight, so I'm not particularly concerned. It's just interesting to see if I can keep her standing through this. If I can, it's pretty cool. The- the Frenzied Swarm? Nuts. That draw, every single time, to keep her standing though? Pretty unbelievable. Does she survive it? She doesn't quite survive it. Maybe if I play enough spells. <laughs> I 
I mean, she does just kind of get absolutely bopped here. Six melee weakness is hard for anyone to survive, I would say. Yeah, good fight. Another uh, very, very strong Stygian run. I have no complaints about strong Stygian runs, where they just give me the right unit. It's, an, it's a weird run. This is a really strange run in terms of uh, how you lose it, because this run was basically decided from Ring 2, where we got the Siren, with Conduit Tethys. The only way that this run loses is if I just don't get Siren there, which is an interesting look at the difficulty of Monster Train, where if you play the seed and you just go Conduit Tethys, go to a unit uh, Stygian banner, the only way you lose is if you miss Sirens, and I don't know, that's just interesting. It feels kind of bad when you lose this run, like this specific run archetype, because it's just, oh, I missed all the Sirens and died. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, not hit that like button. Do not like this video. Uh, do not subscribe to the channel. Unsubscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.